The Candidates Tournament starts on the 17th of March. Eight players battling it out in a double round robin tournament to see who will become the challenger to face Magnus Carlsen for the world title later in the year. Well, before the tournament has even started, we've had some drama as one of the participants has dropped out. That's Temur Rajabov, who felt that he wasn't guaranteed the kind of uh, safety for his health uh, that he wanted. And first of all, I should say I respect his decision. You can't play chess unless you're 100% there and 100% focused. And if he has doubts in his mind, then he shouldn't be playing. So I respect his decision. Well, moving on from that, Fide have replaced Rajabov with Maxime Vachilegrave from France. So he stepped in at the last minute and he qualifies as the player with the highest average rating after Giri. Um, he also came third in the World Cup behind Rajabov and Ding. So. Uh, he, he deserves to be there. Um, so Maxime has seized his chance and it's his first time in the candidates, which you know I find pretty incredible actually uh, for a player that, well, for the past four years has been in the top 10 in the world. You know, he's consistently there. He had a very busy 2019 and actually he admitted at the end of the year that he was physically exhausted. But he has had some time off. Most of December, January, February, he's had clear to kind of recover a little bit. Uh, he did play in the Gibraltar tournament at the end of January. That was his, his one big outing. And he came equal first with seven and a half out of 10. Um, he said that one of his aims for 2020 was to improve his physical condition because he felt that his stamina, you know, wasn't as good as it could be. You know, if you compare with players like Carson, who takes his physical uh, fitness very seriously. Um, so maybe the candidates came a bit too early for him to improve his physical condition. But anyway, he seized his chance. So Maxime was a prodigy. You know, he became a grandmaster at the age of 14. He's won numerous tournaments, so his record in Beale is incredible. He's won Beale on five occasions. He won the Sinkfield Cup in 2017. He's very strong at Blitz and Rapid. Um, he has very combative openings, plays with Black, the Nidorf and the Grunfeld. And with white often you know, takes on main lines. He's very, very well prepared. So that can be a strength and a weakness. He knows these lines really well, uh, but is he flexible enough? You know, those openings can be targeted, but they do bring him some wins as well. So he's very good at end games. Um, and I think uh, that is because his calculation is superb. You know, he's spent a lot of time solving studies. You know, he's a real expert in that, actually, and that's improved his calculation. So that when it comes to finishing off a game, whether that's in the middle game and finding a, a, a tactical win, or in the end game, which again is about calculation when you finish off, he is very good at that. So how's he going to get on? Well, I think this last minute invitation is, is a bit like a free roll for him. You know, he hasn't had the time to prepare specifically against, uh, against his opponents. So uh, I think the pressure is off him. You know, I don't think he's expected to be one of the favourites, but I think that will count in his favour. He's seizing his chance. He's going to do the best he can. And yeah, the pressure is off him a little bit. And I have to say, I'm delighted that he's playing. He's a very friendly guy and very down to earth. Well, let's have a look at one of his games um, that he played against one of the other, other candidates in Gibraltar 2019 against Kirill Alexienko. Now, 
Alexienko wasn't uh, quite the player he is now, but nevertheless, this was only a year ago, basically. Um, and it shows how Maxime can deal with players who aren't absolutely up to it at the board. So it's a Spanish, and this particular line where White puts the pawns on c2, d3, and e4, and plays with a3, this is very popular at the highest levels. So it looks very modest, and it's, it's a very strategic and positional line, at least at the start. But, you know, there is complexity because no pawns have been exchanged at the moment. It looks very odd to have this rook on a2, but the a file often opens up anyway. And Maxime is incredibly experienced in this line. He's played it on, well, let me see, I think uh, four, possibly five occasions. Anyway, he, he's obviously researched it in great depth. He had this, for example, in December. He had this December 2019. He had this against Ding. He played it in St. Louis against Wesley So. He played it in Palma de Mallorca in 2017. Um, so that's and plus this game, that's four. I think it's maybe it's just four games. But anyway, he really knows it incredibly well. So that's really typical of him, that he persists in playing certain opening lines and researches them in great depth. And you might think, well, there's not a lot going on in this position. Black looks really solid. Um, but if you know a position very well, then that can help you. So knight d8 was played by Aronian here, but Alexienko plays knight a7. And recently, for example, we saw a game between Firuzja and Raga from Prague 2020 that went a takes b5. And, well, this leads to a very interesting peace sacrifice, but I have no doubt that Maxime has researched that. But Maxime played pawn takes pawn on c6 and then c4. So this is quite a strategic way of playing. White starts this queenside initiative. Um, and so well, you can see, obviously, there's, there's pressure on this b5 pawn. Maybe white can exchange and push here. Maybe there's a chance to play on the a file as well with, with queen a1. So Black is under a little bit of pressure, but still looks extremely well coordinated. So, well, one can hardly imagine that Black is in trouble here. So let's see what happened. D5 from Alexienko looks pretty good. I mean, this basically explodes the position. It's interesting that Alexienko has said that he likes complex positions. Well, he's got a complex position here, but let's see how he dealt with it. So after, well, these exchanges are very forcing, actually. Once both sides agree to go into this line, then these exchanges have to happen. And it looks as though black is on the way to a draw, actually, with this mass liquidation. But after queen g4, this is a really tough position. And I just have a funny feeling. Well, I, I don't know whether Maxime would have had this uh, on his analysis board, but I think he would have researched the whole line just in general. Um, but anyway, whether it's preparation or not, he has appreciated that this position is extremely difficult for Black to defend. Now, if you run this through a computer, it will show you that Black is actually still fine here. But there are huge tactical problems. So let's examine. Well, first of all, this knight is under fire. Well, it's protected by queen and bishop at the moment, but they can be overloaded. There are potentially problems on the e-file because that bishop is unprotected, although at the moment the knight is in the way. The queen is very active, looking at a couple of sensitive spots in black's position. So all in all, these tactical weaknesses give black problems. So let's look at the alternatives. Well, what about taking a pawn? Let's look at knight takes d3. This 
actually loses material. Because of queen e2, there's a nice move. Pin and win. And if rook a3, actually knight takes d3, and you can see the queen hits the bishop. Well, it's an illustration of how the loose bishop can lead to problems. So let's go back. Let's try another move. Well, what about tucking that bishop out of the way? Bishop f8 looks very natural. Well, in this case, there's another weakness here, the pawn on f7. And after this, well, white crashes in. And if that's taken and that is checkmate, that's a problem. OK, well, what about bishop f6? That, does that guard things? Well, no, because that knight would then be on prees. You can see how black is getting overloaded here. In fact, the best move is knight c2. Now, that is not an obvious move, not an easy move to calculate by any stretch. Um, even here, white has very interesting possibilities. In fact, black is OK. Um, if rook c1, then queen b2 is a good move. Uh, remarkably, black is all right here. I mean, this is really complicated. If that's taken, then check. And that can win the rook. But actually, rook a1 is still all right. And that will lead to a draw by perpetual check. I know I'm going into huge detail here, but... Um, it's, it's a really fascinating position. There's another move after knight c2, which Alexienko would have had to calculate, and that's knight takes f7. And this looks fatal with the old smothered mate trick threatened, but there is one defense, not queen here. That will actually lose. Um, basically because of this. Let's go back. But queen b8 is actually drawing. That gives the king a little bit of room and prevents the um, checkmate in the corner. Um, so it's really complicated. But as I said, knight c2 should actually work for black. But Alexienko played rook a7, protecting the bishop. And this is problematic. It leaves the back rank weak. Um, so in this position, um, well, Maxime played an excellent move, actually. I mean, there are so many tempting moves here. Queen c8. In fact, h4 was played. It's a great move. And that gives the king an escape square. And that will free the rook for operations. And basically, just tactically, black is all over the place here. Um, Alexienko played knight c6. But this lost immediately to bishop h6. And then knight d7. And black fell apart. Um, threats to take here and to take here for example, and the game ended f5, queen takes, and that was the final move of the game. Queen takes bishop, mate is threatened. Um, if rook takes knight here and queen e6, and if king h8, then queen f7 and rook e8, and king g7, rook e3, followed by rook g3, and that's fatal. The queen is way out across the other side of the board. Um, I think classic illustration of Maxime's strengths. Great calculation, you know, finished off beautifully. And an incredibly well-researched opening and, you know, handled the middle game really well. Anyway, we wish Maxime the best of luck.